Okay, I've mentioned at least in one of my videos using a, um, a attenuator as a load. Now I was talking about a 30, 30 dB attenuator and uh, a lot of people, not a lot of people, I've gotten a few comments saying, you can't do that. Um, so let me show you what it, what it is and what it isn't. Okay, so I have a box of attenuators here. And uh, so I have the VNA set up and I have a, a really precise 50 ohm, this is a very expensive 50 ohm load. And it is smack dab in the middle. And it is uh, very low here, uh, uh, greater than 40 dB of return loss, right? So this is a perfect, a perfect load, perfect, perfect load. All right, so let's put on a 30 dB attenuator. And remember I told you that it's 30 dB in, 30 dB out. So if there's any reflection, uh, it sees th 30 dB to the open and then it reflects back and it sees another 30 dB. So there we go. Minus 40, minus 42 dB, um, uh, uh, dB down, right? So it's, it's just as good as, as an expensive load. Just as good. All right, so 30 dB, still a perfect load. All right, let's do 20 dB. Here's a very nice 20 dB attenuator. Let's see how it does. So 20 dB would be 20 in, 20 out, that's 40. So it's a little bit worse. Uh, so we have a little, I mean, on the Smith chart, it's perfect. Uh, let's go over here to where it's the worst. It's minus 27 dB, um, still a perfect load. All right, so, so 20 dB, 30 dB, you're doing just good. Um, let's do a, tw let's see, we did a 20 dB. Here's a cheapy, cheapy Chinese 20 dB. Let's do a cheapy Chinese 20 dB. Um, and it's dead. Wow, it's dead. Uh, wow. Okay. Maybe the reason they're saying it because they have lousy attenuators. Here's another cheapy 20 dB attenuator. Ah, perfect. All right, so this one is minus 37, right? Minus 33. So this one's great. Uh, okay, so let's line them up here. Uh, that one's good. Uh, this one's good. I'll make sure they don't roll off my, uh, roll off my desk here. Oh, I just have to be careful. Let me put a, a ruler here so they don't roll off the desk. That one's good, that one's good. Uh, 30 dB. 30 dB was good. Yeah, what's wrong with this one? Hope I haven't been using it. Uh, oh, it's just, oh, it's just wonky. Oh, look at that. Oh, now it's perfect. Now it's minus 30. All right, so uh, I will show you what's wrong with these attenuators. They're, the way that they're, they're constructed, I don't know if I'll be able to take this one apart. Um, they kind of are once you put them together, they're very, very hard to take back apart. But if you didn't put them back together right, um, let's go ahead and put a wrench on it. Uh, see if that if that does anything. Now this one's still bad. Something wrong with this one. So um, I have had them come apart. So that one's that one's questionable. And then let's do this one. So you know, be careful about the cheap Chinese ones. I try to avoid them. Yeah, this one seems to be good. Uh, all right, so this one's good. We'll put it in. The, we'll put it in the good pile. All right, let's try this one. This is a. This one's a. Oh, jeez! I don't want to drop it on the floor. Let's try this out. Thirty dB. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Maybe better than the load. Uh, okay, so that one's good. Uh, what else do I have? Okay, now I'm down to the 6 dB pads. I have a bunch of 6 dB pads. Now, the 6 dB pad, of course, is going to be bad because 6 dB is not, is not enough. So definitely don't use a 6 dB pad. Let's take a look at that. Um, yeah, you can see that the uh, Smith chart is starting to have a line now. And our return loss is around minus 12. I mean, you know, for really quick measurement, minus 12, nah. All right, so minus 12 for that one. Let's try another 6 dB pad. Um, yeah, same. These are probably all the same. These are very, these are very expensive 6 dB pads. These are Winchell. 
So I'm assuming these are made perfect, of course. Yeah, these are all the same. These are all exactly the same. But since I'm here, I might as well test all my attenuators since I did find one weird one. That's kind of strange. Um, I hate the reflections here. All right, so these are, these are all the same. Uh, so we have this one attenuator that is not happy. Yeah, look at that one. Wow. So uh, what do we know about that? We know that it is a uh, capacitor because it's on the bottom and it's going from a good load to an open. Okay. Um, so that probably says it's in series. Uh, so yeah, so it's just not making contact. Um, all right. So can we open this? Can, can we repair it? So the way these things are constructed is there is a little circuit board inside and this SMA connector and this MA connector, um, spring load to that board. And if those springs aren't making good contact, then these things don't work well. So let's, uh, let me see if I can open this up. And, uh, I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't think I'll be able to, but we might be able to tighten it. Uh, but I don't know if I'll be able to take it apart. So I'll give it a try. So I was successful in taking it apart. It was quite loose, which is never a good sign. Um, so let's take a look at this. Um, I don't know if it shows on the camera, but to my eye, this is thing is not concentric. <laughs> it's not made very well. Let me, let's see if I can't focus on here. There we go. Um, I don't know. That just doesn't look like it's in the center to me. So that's one problem. Now see, there's a little, uh, connector there and there's a pin on this side. So this is just a, uh, kind of a, uh, male, male adapter, right? And inside of this part is a pin. There's a pin down there. So, so this is just doing pin to pin. Now there could be a couple things wrong. One could be that there was some Loctite put on, this looks kind of gooey. Looks like there's maybe some Loctite put on there and it actually add, added uh, insulation. And when these got screwed together, this was not making good contact. That's my first guess. Uh, the other guess is that maybe these pins don't make good contact to that little pin down there. Maybe it's a loose fit. Um, but my first guess maybe is this gooiness and that it wasn't on tight. So I think I need to strip this with alcohol and uh, see if we can't put it back together. Um, let me see if I can pull that, um, let me see if I can pull that device out of there. Now, this little thing in the middle here, yeah, there we go, pulls out. So see, it's got a pin, uh, there we go. It's got a pin on both sides. And so it plugs into that one down there and it's, it is a, uh, male to female adapter. So yeah, it's this little thing here. So, uh, I don't think that's what's bad. Um, now it might not maybe be making, be making good contact to the outside. It needs to make good contact with the walls of the, uh, of the attenuator as well. But yeah, my guess is, oh, I was going to test that, wasn't I? Let me pull this out again. It, it, it fits well. I could, I could feel it go into the, into the socket in there. Well, let's try these two together. Yeah, these, these fit well also. So as long as that's a, it's, it's gold, gold. I mean, you know, really, really bad gold, but it, it is gold, gold contact. This is kind of an aluminum gold contact, which isn't the greatest, but I think it might be this goo on these, on these threads. You can see they're very, very dirty. So let me, let me put this back in. It doesn't matter which way to do it. If you put it in forwards or backwards, it doesn't matter. Let me put this one back in here. There we go. Okay. So yeah, let me, let me clean this off with some alcohol. Is that cleaner? I think so. I'm using some uh, ethanol to 
to do the cleaning. You could use isopropyl, I don't think it matters, depending on what or what material this is that you're trying to dissolve. Sometimes ethanol, methanol, or isopropyl. Sometimes they dissolve different things. Sorry, my hand was in the way. Oh, I think that's better. So let's see if I can't screw these in. Now, see, it's going to be hard to put together. So, uh, I am going to screw in an adapter here, and then that will help me push it in there. So this is how I think they they originally got these things tight. But how tight can you really make it, right? If you make it too tight, then you can't take this off. So I'm trying to make it. Let's take our little SMA and screw them on. Look at that. He looks perfect now. Perfect, 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 as any uh, 30 dB pad should. This is the 30 dB pad, so it should have been perfect. So let's uh, turn on the uh, return, <coughs> excuse me, the return loss. And uh, yeah, now we're down here at minus 37. So, uh, so there you go. So that was a good lesson. Uh, one is uh, don't be afraid. Oh man, those reflections are terrible, aren't they? I don't know how to get rid of those. Um, hmm. Anyway, the uh, lesson here is that uh, test your test your attenuators. Uh, make sure they're tight. Make sure they've been assembled correctly. Now, um, this one is an anomaly. Um, try to buy U.S. made ones if you can, or, or Swiss or something, some brand name ones. These Chinese ones are just have some quality control issues. They are cheap though, but if you shop around the uh, uh, on the used market, ten, you know, tenuators usually are, are, are a dime a dozen, and, and on the, maybe not a dime a dozen, but you can get them fairly cheap on the used market, and uh, they are quite good. Let me give you a couple brand names here. If you're going on to the used market, these are quite good. These are Wenchel. Uh, these are W E I N S C H E L. Uh, Weinchel, actually. Uh, it's a German, so it's Weinchel. Weinchel. And uh, I've always heard them called Wenchel, but <laughs> uh, they look like they're Weinchel. And uh, there's these. These are very good. This is an Allen, A-L-A-N. And uh, this one's quite good. This is a, a trilithic, I believe. Yeah, tri trilithic. Trilithic. Um, and do we have any other brand name ones? Uh, not right here. And then there are these uh, Chinese ones. The Chinese ones are usually gold, gold looking. Uh, all the good ones seem to be silver looking, you know, silver, <laughs> or uh, they're probably stainless steel, nickel or something. Um, but uh, yeah, these can be very, very cheap too. Now, now these, these, these two are uh, 20, 20 dB and they were, they were reasonable. Uh, they look like they're made quite well. The uh, machining and stuff on the, on the actual uh, metal and stuff looks quite good. I don't know who made those. This one doesn't look as good. Um, the way that I tell the difference uh, between a, a, a good one and a, and, a, and a cheapy one is take a look at the uh, the wrench connection here, the, 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 the hex. And these are quite flat and they come to a quite a good point. Uh, the cheapy ones are all roundy. They look like they've been in a rock tumbler and uh, are, are all smooth. Um, but if you take a look at, uh, you know, quality ones, they're going to be these nice, uh, these nice square edges. And, and this one here has some, says, has some nice square edges. So I'm not exactly sure who made these. The threads look better too the, the, than, than this one. This one's definitely, on, this one's definitely on the cheap side. The threads look cheaper and this part on the end looks cheaper. Um, yeah, so... This one says SMA JK6G-30DB. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, this one not so good. I think I'll uh, maybe not use this one anymore.